So, hello and welcome to the CMIP Panel Debate Theatre here at NAB Show 2022. And we have a wonderful session today, Faster Than Fast, how to make reusing your VOD content cheap, quick and lucrative. And with me, I have an all-star panel of industry experts. And let's start with Pepin. Please introduce yourself, Pepin. Cool. Thanks, Will. My name is Pepin Tayais. I work for Unified Streaming. And as you just described, VOD to live, fast channels, virtual channels. I think uh, we're one of the guys that have the tools in our toolbox to help you do that. And Magnus. Magnus Svensson. I work at a company called Ivan Technology. We're based out of Stockholm, Sweden, and we are independent streaming experts, helping the industry with fast as one thing, but uh, everything else that's concerned streaming. And Laurent. Hello, my name is Laurent Potesta. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Add-in Session Platform. We are working in this uh, Add-in Session environment since more than 50 years. Started on broadcast, <coughs> extending on streaming and OTT and monetization since then. And Ashley. Uh, I'm Ashley Horn. I'm the technical director at SimpleStream. Um, so we work in the OTT space as an end-to-end -end provider from video workflow, subscriber management, advertising, and um, uh, end applications. So we're an industry that love ac acronyms. <laughs> but before we dive into the, the nitty gritty, from a top level view, and let's, let's throw that one at, Ma at Magnus. Yeah. What is fast? Why should I care? Fast is actually TV as we know it. It's linear TV in the traditional free TV. And I, I, I usually start with a, a study that was done by Omdia a couple of years ago when they asked people what was their way of m finding content to watch. And 30% of the respondents asked, uh, answered sapping through channels, flickering through channels. So I, I believe that the need for a lean back TV experience is there. And I think fast is the streaming modern way of doing it where you actually stitch together what assets into a linear stream, putting ads in it and monetizing your, your content in a different way than, than on demand. And, and as an acronym, it's uh, I'm not free advertising streaming television. It says what it says on the, t does what it says on the tin. <laughs> right. Okay. So, if it's television, why is it growing so quickly? Particularly in North America, but there is global adoption. Why is fast growing so fast? I believe it's because it, it, it's free TV and it, it's an alternative for the cord cutters. So if you leave your cable subscription that is quite costly and, and you turn on the til television and suddenly you have TV channels there as well. The normal TV channels that you recognize. We don't see the same growth in Europe yet. I think it's just a matter of time, but I think the, the we're more in Europe, we're more used to free TV as, as over the air or through cable or through a satellite. So we're, we're not really there yet. And I think in Latin America and, and Asia, we have a general adoption as well. So it will come. It's a, it's, a, it's a global trend starting from the US where the cord cutters need, they still want their linear channels. They still want their channel packages. They still want to sap through channels. And, and fast is the way to do it on streaming. So from a technical standpoint, and I know that you're a wizard, <laughs> I've been told that you're a wizard, uh, how does fast work? Well, now I've really got something to stand yeah, up to, you right? Do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think there's, there's, there's quite a few parts to it. Um, I think to begin with, you're looking at your content, right? So you've got on-demand content and you want to monetize this through fast. So you're taking it in, you're normalizing it, you're getting in uh, a scheduled data so that you can create that live service. Um, and then once you've normalized it, what do you want to put out? Now, do you want to just put out your content or do you want to create lots of fast channels? Do you want to do something that's thematic? So uh, we work with a service where they have um, a fast channel just for quilting, which is, is more exciting than it sounds. You said, you said quilting. Quilting, yeah. Okay. They have one for sewing as well. Okay. Everything's covered. Okay. Um, and so, so you've got your content, you normalize that, um, and that's work that, that we do and, and, and uh, I do with um, uh, Unified. Um, and then uh, once you've normalized it and you've got that linear stream, you want to look at the, the monetization of it. So add insertion technology. In between each of those pieces of content, where am I putting a marker? How long is that piece of um, ad insertion going to be for? And then what can I send to the ad server to say, these are the parameters. So if I'm syndicating it to a partner, what information can I get back? 
And then the final part is that piece of syndication. So where's this fast channel going? Am I sending it to Samsung? And am I sending it to Roku? Am I sending it to Zumo? And if I am, what schema do I need to use? Each of them have a different flavor. So the best way to get it on all of them is to work with someone that has those schemas already built in. So I can syndicate my, my VOD content in a linear service with ads in it downstream to all of those platforms. Okay, so let's assume that say I'm a third division football team or a I know I have lots of surfing content. Yeah. If I want to stand up a fast channel fast, what are my options? Well, so if you want to do it really quickly, as long as you've got enough content in there, it will last you 24 hours. And even then, if you want to loop it, you don't have to worry about it too much. Mm. But you've just got to get it into a CMS that can normalize it. Okay. Encode it, transcode it, so you're using the same frame rate, the same bit rate. So when it becomes a live channel, it's seamless. Okay. At that point, all you've got to decide is where do you want your ad markers? Do you want them at the start of every um, uh, piece of content or do you want mid-rolls in there as well? Okay. Um, once you've decided that, how long are each of those pods going to be? And then where do you want it to go? Do you want, it, do you want to do it to one and do it as a test bed? Or do you want to try and get it to as many platforms as possible? Okay. And then when you've done really well and you've got loads of surfing content, do I want ones for Bondi Beach? And do I want another channel for... Um, Norfolk, sorry, is a terrible reference for <laughs> surfing. <laughs> I want to see you normalize that. Yeah. <laughs> and does that require my teams internally to learn new systems and build new workflows? What does it mean for me as an operator? Do I have to get involved in that process of building out the fast service? No, so, so that's, that's where we hopefully come in and help with that. So you provide us all of your surfing content, we will do that normalization for you, okay. um, and we will syndicate that to the partners that you want. You okay. just have to make the decisions as what ad server do you want to use, um, what platforms do you want to send it to, and how many channels do you want to create. Now, people that know me know that I'm a very greedy man, and I'd like to make lots of money from my <laughs> fast <laughs> channel. What does monetization look like in the world of fast? Yeah. So perhaps I can jump on that. So well monetization is, of course, a key element in for fast because it's really that is able to uh, create the content and, and push the, the service. And uh, basically you have, uh, depending of which company uh, you have, you have multiple ways to make it. So if you are a big company, you have ad sales, you can include this ad inventory, which is created, which is quite interesting because it's on a big screen. It's a CTV, uh, mainly a CTV uh, ad inventory. Uh, then you can include this, include this inventory in your standard way for the online sales to, to sell the ads. Um, if you are a more content provider and, and as you say, you are very specific, you have uh, some surf content, and you don't have a big team, you, you really just want to create the channel and to push your content to consumer. Uh, in this case, uh, you can use different companies that will help you on that. We, we it's where we are uh, moving on our side to aggregate all this content because of course at servers, SSPs, they are uh, thinking about uh, hundreds of millions of impression a month and perhaps you will do five, 10 millions and, and not so much. Uh, and then that, that we do and that some other companies are doing is that we aggregate all this inventory on, on our side and we have all the pipelines to uh, different ad servers, SSPs to optimize um, your, your selling process and to be sure also that you have ads uh, to, to be inserted because it's also very <laughs> important to, to have ads in the ad breaks because if you don't have ads in the ad breaks, you have like a filler, yeah, yeah. which is quite annoying for people. Um, and also, I think it's something uh, very important for people that want to, to launch fast, is uh, we need to, in advance, to prepare the brief and all the information for the ad uh, environment, because everything, everybody thinks that programmatic is, is completely automatic, but you have people behind. And then people need to understand what, what are the channels, which content, which device you will have, to be able to prepare the demand on, on, on this inventory that has been created by, by, the, by the service. Uh, so it's not uh, that you just plug one ad server and you wait and it's, it's working. Um, this is a, sometimes I have customers coming say, oh yeah, I'm connected to this ad server and I have no ads. But you have 
did you explain the, the uh, inventory? What is your volume? Uh, did you connect all the data? Uh, you need to have information about this inventory in the, the automatic process. And uh, a lot of time, you know, I have no data, I have nothing. And then, yes, you have no ad because the buyers, they potentially don't know which content is it. And if it's potentially fraudulent or, or sold, you know. Do I have to do that process? Because let's say my Will's third division English football <laughs> channel vast I might not have a team of people doing ad sales or doing metadata tagging. No, it, it, yeah, it's really what we do. So okay. when, when, we, when we onboard a customer, we highlight from the beginning this sort of things. Okay. Uh, to, to be sure that we, we will have data, we will have uh, something clean to be sent to ad servers and, and SSPs, uh, to be sure that we can have demand. And we also, in terms of content, we also uh, give some feedbacks to say, okay, be careful, this sort of content at this, at this timing is perhaps not so optimal because your fill rate is low. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have period of time, you have uh, also a period during the year. So January is normally okay. a, a, a low uh, month in terms of ads. So uh, give us so some examples. Then. I mean, the quilt channel, can it can fast be literally any type of content where there's an audience? Is, is that the way? I mean, you've been there like a silent <laughs> assassin <laughs> in this one. Nobody will believe you if you say <laughs> that. <laughs> can fast be anything? Yeah, I think fast can literally be anything. Mm. So one of the benefits, if your infrastructure underneath is not depending on a very expensive active active encoder workflow, all the bits and pieces that you need to monitor with many people at the same time, which, which makes the using, um, uh, so if you use the encoders, you can have a couple of channels, let's say 10 or 100, but it will get expensive very quickly. Right. If you use the true philosophy of fast, whereby you're actually standing up channels by creating a playlist, you can run 10,000 of them. If nobody's watching, nothing, nothing's happening and it doesn't cost you anything. So you can literally not go quilting, you can go quilting in circles on blue. Right. If, if you have the content, I, I don't, I'll be honest. <laughs> but and, and, that you, and that's that another point you point out there, so the cost model is based on viewers. You don't, if, if you have X number of viewers, that costs X amount to set up that service. It's funny coming from you, because I know how you're into money. I would call it the revenue model. I'm talking okay. about making money, not what it costs. Okay. So how much it costs is, is actually depending on um, uh, setting it up first. And right. Ashley can tell you all about it, like how much time do you spend on it. It depends on how you're monetizing it, which is uh, uh, Laurent who will help okay. you. And that is, I'm expecting, user-driven. Um, and for us, from the infrastructure underneath, yes. If nobody's watching, that's What's nothing. Definitely. If okay. a lot of people are watching on one channel, it's a live channel. It catches right. perfectly. Don't come back to us. Right. Now, if you get uh, 10,000 people watching at 10,000 channels, yeah, you're probably going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, also, it's also sustainability and environment here as well, because yeah. it, it, it doesn't require any data power if no one is watching. Exactly. And okay. you can do that personalized, so you can get a Papan channel, you can get no your okay. flavor of the quilt. <laughs> so it, it, it's very flexible as well. You can spin up new channels as soon as you have the need for it. Oh, so I've asked very basic questions. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to ask more complicated questions to make these four wise men squirm in their chairs, <laughs> now is the perfect opportunity. No, yeah, you're going to get off lightly. Yeah. Now, I know that you're all around this area. I'm going to ask one last thing from each of you then. So, okay, I've asked some very simplistic questions, but it's clear that from your description, fast is very easy for a non-broadcaster, in quotes, to become a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would be, Ashley, start with you, what would be your top tip if somebody was thinking about, hell, I've got some content, let me get into this. What's the t what would be your, your top tip? Uh, I, I think the, the key thing is to spend some time looking at the monetization. And I think, you know, working with people like Laurent, where you've got your, your ad service, making sure that it, it supports the server-side ad insertion that you want, okay. but more interestingly, setting all of the parameters, tweaking those a little bit, so that you're okay. getting the highest level of monetization out of that. The content pieces and the syndication pieces, once you set them up, just work. It's the monetization when you get really right, and you can tweak it, you can spend some time doing some A-B testing, but that's the area that I go, spend your time, look at that, make sure you're working with the right partners, and you've got it set up. Okay, so show me the money. Yes. That's down to you now. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. <laughs> but it's, it's, of course, money is linked to content. And I think uh, we, we all, the all the time think about content is king. Yep. And it's true in fast as well. 
so of course you can make a lot of channels. The, the question is uh, also on the distribution. Yeah. Uh, because you need to have these channels broadcasted and, and distributed on CTVs, on Samsung and so on. And, and these, these guys are also now uh, very careful on the, the which channel they are okay. taking because they also have a look on the monetization. So basically, if your channel is not performing too, too, well, too, okay. m too correctly, they will be also careful to not put too much content okay. or too much channels uh, on this type of content. So if you're going to do it, do it so well. So just, yeah. and, and we say, yeah, everybody can be broadcaster, but it's still, uh, it's, it's still you still need to have viewers. Okay. So content is, is very important. And it's funny that it's me that's saying that because I'm, I'm on the uh, monetization side. About yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah we, we met that. all. <laughs> but content is very important. So just think and, and, and also be careful to grab data because I know that a lot of platforms don't uh, return platform uh, data about consuming, uh, how many people are watching. This is, this is a very important element because this will help you also on in your schedule. Uh, so everything is linked, you know, if you have people, you need to have a monetization. Okay. So the content is very important. And after you need to have the right tool to monetize. And Magnus, top tip, we've only got a minute. So top tip, I would say, look at where you want to publish your channel. So do you want to go with the Samsung TVs, the LGs, or do you want to be part of Pluto? Or and also think about, like you said, content, uh, regionalization. Not all content that is popular in US will yeah. be popular in Europe. So, and the opposite around. So you need to be able to know where to publish your content and, and also carefully select your content in the region you want to publish it. Pepin, final top tip. S since I'm the last one in and time is running out, I'm just going to throw it back at them and say, don't be afraid to play with it. Now you have yeah. this chance to actually yeah. create that many channels. If yeah. nobody's watching, nothing's happening. So yes, Samsung is only going to give you a channel. But what if you can throw out 20 channels into social media, see which one resonate? Yeah. That one, ha Samsung happily will pick up. Yeah. I remember many right. years ago, we had a, a, a person on this panel that were doing a I think it was an animation channel. Um, I can't remember what type of animation, but it was quite niche. And when he told me how many viewers they had, the subscribers, it was in the hundreds of thousands. Because he said, it, it's, you don't understand, it's not like we have 100,000 in this one country. We have 2,000 here, 3,000 there, 5,000 there. And if you add it all up, it's a healthy business. And it seems like fast is sort of go forward five years. We laugh at the quilting channel, but my mum likes quilting. It's there, it's there, yeah. So, I, we'll have to now teach how to use the internet and <laughs> I can get you a subscriber. Okay, so that's it, that's a really, thank you for that panel, thank you for your candor and your honesty. Um, so that's it, if we wanna do fast, just watch the last 20 minutes, <laughs> job done, find <laughs> these five four w wise men, and that's it. Am thank I right? Yes, yeah. okay, thank a big you round much. of applause. Wonderful.